I'm going to tie a grasshopper pattern now called the Henry's Fork Hopper. When you fish large dry flies on Spring Creek waters like the Henry's Fork, there are a lot of considerations. The fish really get a good look at that fly, so it has to look natural. And with hoppers, usually the wind's blowing. And this fly was developed to be very streamlined, to cast easily into the wind and still float on the water like a natural hopper. And a hopper actually floats in the water rather than on it. The Henry's Fork Hopper is constructed almost entirely of elk hair. And I like to use a light elk hair for the body. This is a natural cream elk hair that comes off the rump of the elk. You can use a lot of different colors to imitate the body on hoppers. A lot of hoppers have a yellow body and some of them more of a tan. But we've found most of the hoppers on the Henry's Fork have kind of a cream colored body. Now take and clip the tips of this hair off and then lay it about a third of the way back down the hook shank and tie it in by the tip part of the hair. And then just tie back very tightly and work back to the bend of the hook. And this is forming sort of a foundation for the body. We're going to pull it back forward in a minute and form a very natural looking segmented body. It's going to have a little bit of an extension on it. So when you get back to the bend of the hook, then bring your thread around this hair and keep coming back. Keep working it back. I don't like a long extension. Maybe about a fourth the length of the hook shank. When you've got the thread back as far as you need it, then come back forward just up and to where you can tie in front of the hook bend again. Now we're going to pull all this hair forward. And I found that's easiest to do by separating it into two parts. Flare it all out and then take half of it on the side nearest you and half on the side away from you and just pull it forward. And that's the position you want it. Now we'll take the thread. We've got one little hair sticking out. I'm just going to break it off. Now take the, your thread and make one complete turn and now tighten down. Now you're, the difficult part of this is you about have to use your left hand if you're right handed to work the thread up the body and this might be a little uncomfortable for you but you can get used to it. And tighten this thread down. It will You'll find it'll snug into this elk hair and really form a nice segmented look to the body of the hopper. And when you get right back up to where you started, then make three or four real tight turns to tie that down. And there's your body. I busted the thread. That's going to happen to you once in a while too. I hope at least it doesn't only happen to me. And I think if you aren't putting enough tension to break the thread once in a while, you're probably not getting it tied tight enough. And it's easy to fix. Don't worry about it if you break the thread. Just leave the thread right where, it, where the broken part is and start right where you left off. Make two or three tight turns and when wind back over the part that's broken, make sure you get enough of that broken thread, the loose end of it, under so that it won't come loose. And now we're going to clip the remainder of this thread off. 
Now all this material here is going to be gone, so let's clip it down just as tight as you can get it. Right down next to the hook shank. Now notice we've left a little bit of room there for the head. I like about a fourth of the length of the hook shank when I tie the thread, when I tie the hair off and the clip part will still leave a little bit of room there so that we can tie the head. Now that's the body and it really has a nice segmented effect and that's one of the great things about the Henry's Fork Hopper is it floats right down in the surface film. Kind of A hopper floats like an iceberg. A lot of its body is actually under the surface. And this fly accomplishes that. Now we're going to put a wing on. For the wing, I'm going to use a yellow elk here. And once again, I think you can experiment according to the area that you're fishing. I think you should be collecting a few hoppers. If you're in a fishing stream that has good hopper fishing, then make sure to catch some hoppers. Take them home and look at them. I'm going to stack this hair in a stacker so the tips will be even. And then we'll measure this wing. I, I like the wing to be about the same length as the body. Just about like that. Transfer your left hand over and grasp the wing. And then make two turns all the way around this hair before you tighten it. That's going to help keep it all together and it won't roll over on you. Then tighten. Don't try to tighten it all in one pull or you'll probably break your thread. Go around it again, tighten some more, some more. It'll just keep tightening down a little bit with each turn. And I think that works the best when you're trying to tighten down this hair. Now it's all flared out and we'll fix that in a minute because we don't want it flared out. Let's clip the butt part of this hair I really like hopper fishing I think the first time I really saw a fish really bust a hopper he really didn't take a a hopper I was sitting on the bank of the Henry's Fork with a good friend of mine and Renee Harrop and he threw a cigarette butt in the river and a fish came up and ate it. And so that made me realize that, that a hopper with a, with a body that's nicely shaped that'll float right in the surface film will probably work as good as anything. Now you can see that wing is sticking up and I really don't want it to do that so what I'm going to do is hold it back this way, hold it right against the body and bring the thread back to the first segment that you made and make two fairly loose turns over the wing then bring the thread forward again and now tighten it down so it's tightening around the hook shank and not around the wing. Now it will lay back and at this point I'm going to put some cement and I think you're going to have the best success with these flies if you'll tie them in segments. Like if you're going to tie a dozen flies, or however many you decide, then lay your materials out and tie a dozen of them right up to this point. Then go back and start on the next step. So after the cement dries, then we're going to put an overwing. And for the overwing, there's a lot of materials that you can use. This is a modeled hen saddle, and this works great. You can get these in all colors. And another material that works very well is the saddle feathers off of a pheasant, preferably a hen pheasant, but a rooster pheasant will work fine too. 
And these feathers are called the church window feathers. And we need to prepare this feather so that we can tie it on. If we just tie it on the way it is, all, this, all these fibers will flare out. So what I do is use some Dave's Flex Cement or Vinyl Cement. And I take and put some drops of this material right on there. And, and you'll need to put three or four drops and then pull the material right through with your finger and thumb. And it will stick everything together so that it won't flare apart when you tie it down. And so you would need to prepare some of these feathers ahead of time. I just happened to have one that I prepared right here. This is what it should look like. And that's all glued together with a flexible cement. And now there's a little trick to putting this wing on. If you hold it right up here at the front and tie it in like you do most wings, then when it's done it will probably be sticking upright like this. We want to roll this feather around the other wing, the underwing. And so we will hold it back in this area. Make sure to get the thread so that it is on top of the underwing. And here's the way we tie it in. You don't have to tie this in very tight. Just snug it down with two turns and now use the same trick that we used with the underwing and that's move the thread back to that first segment and make two loose turns then come back in front of the wing and tighten it down in front. Now you can see where that feather is. It's nice and flat, rolled right over the body. Clip the remainder of the feather off and we've almost got this hopper completed. Now let's put a drop of cement to help hold that overwing in place. Doesn't take much, just one drop and let it flow down over where, the thread where we tied it down. I used to put legs on these hoppers when I first started tying them, but I'm really not a leg man. I don't think that the fish really care that much if the fly has legs or if it doesn't have legs. But if you want to put legs on the fly, now's the time to do it. Just before you put the head on. Now we're going to put the head of the fly on, and I'm going to use elk hair. Once again, use a color that matches the color scheme of the hopper that you're trying to tie. For the original Henry's Fork hopper, I just use a natural gray elk hair. And we're going to cut some of this and stack it. Now, when you take it out of the stacker, it's not going to be perfect. You're still going to have some fibers of hair that's too long and some that are too short. And you may even have to stack it again to get it so that it looks good. Hold it by the tips and try to get any short ones out again. Short hair in this fly is going to cause you trouble. You want to have all the hair as close to the same length as possible. Also, I like to look for broken tips. Now that looks pretty good. Now we're going to do the most difficult part of tying the Henry's Fork Hopper. We're going to tie in the head. And we do it by t making a bullet shaped head. We'll tie this hair forward and then we'll pull it back in a bullet shape. It might take a little experimentation as to how long you should tie this hair. Usually I figure about the length of the hook shank and you'll come out about right. We'll put it right in there in that little area that we left available and I kind of roll it around the shank a little bit. Now make two loose turns and then snug it up and it'll flare. Don't try to do it all at once. Make another turn, tighten again, another turn, tighten again. Do three or four good tight turns 
and then clip the butt part of the hair off. And that'll be, you'll clip it right down as tight as you can, right in front of the wing. Get all this loose hair out of there. Okay. We've got it all on there. Now we're going to pull it back and make a bullet shaped head. So we're going to need to move the thread back to the area that we will call the collar. So wind it tightly back until it's right at the front of the wing. Take your finger and spread this hair out so that it will flare around. Try to get an equal amount of hair all the way around the fly. When that looks good, then take your left hand and just pull it all back and hold it. Now I had a couple of hairs there that were, I think, going the wrong direction. I'm going to take my thumbnail and really push them because they're trying to go the wrong place. You can coax that hair into going where you want if you work with it. Now we've got it the way we want it. There's the bullet shaped head and all we've got to do now is make a couple of turns of around it with the thread and pull it tight. And I'm putting right almost a breaking point on the thread. I'm really pulling that tight and make five or six good tight turns and that's forming a little bit of a collar. If you don't make this tight then when you start fishing the fly this collar or thread is going to slide forward. And this is about the proportion you want. If you look now at this Henry's Fork Hopper you can see the bullet shaped head and then these long hairs form sort of a collar they will help to float the fly, and I think they will also give the impression of legs. That's why I don't worry too much about the legs on this fly. At this point, we want to whip finish it right on the collar. And then we'll tie it off. I love the Henry's Fork Hopper, not just because it is so easy to catch fish and it looks so much like a hopper, but I like it because it casts so easy into the wind. It's a very aerodynamic fly. And even though I first designed it to fish on the Henry's Fork and other spring creeks, I've found that it works everywhere I've ever fished it. I've even had good hopper fishing on lakes and it is fairly easy to tie. I hope you'll work on it and be successful.